Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1621. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to share with you today a guest calling in from New Jersey, where he says it's a little hot and humid, Burton Hall. Burton, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am buckled up. All right, we're going to have some fun today. But before we jump into a proper introduction, I want to ask you this. What's one little thing that most people may not know about you, Burton? Um, okay. Uh, when I was... Uh about four years old, I was in the back seat of my parents' suicide door, Plymouth, and the door opened, and I fell out of the car. Oh, my gosh. And the car, um, it ran over me. Oh, my gosh. That's which horrible. Which really has resulted in my lifelong fascination with automobiles. Um, <laughs> yeah. I remember that seeing my mother's hand, she said she was trying to catch me. I'm not sure if she was pushing. <laughs> pushing but, you. Um, <laughs> you were misbehaving in that back seat. <laughs> I must have been. But um, I remember going out and as a kid, and maybe you remember, kids had big clunky red sole, like waffle soles on their bottom of their shoes so they'd never wear out. And the rear wheel of the car hit the waffle shoe and bounced up over. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Wow. And the only things I remember are getting up and running like hell away because I was scared. And the next only other memory I have is now where all the scabs were on my knees and elbows and my father having to pick me up because I couldn't bend my legs. Oh, my but, gosh. So not, not a lot of people know that that was my beginning fascination with automobiles inside and out. Burton, that's kind of a tough way to fall in love with cars, I think. <laughs> so, your, par your poor parents must have been horrified. I mean, I can't even imagine as a parent, were you the only child in the family at that time? I, I had an older sister. An older sister. Well, maybe your sister pushed you out the car, you know. No, she, she would not. She was, uh, and by that time, she was just uh, out of the house. And, uh, oh, much older sister. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So I was pretty much by myself in the back and now I know why they call them suicide doors. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank goodness you survived that. I mean, talk <laughs> about dodging a bullet, you know, and maybe they, they say even people have nine lives. So you took one, got rid of one pretty quick there. <laughs> <laughs> <So fast. laughs> yeah. Wow. What a story. That's, that's one for the ages. Well, I'm glad you survived. I'm glad you're with me today. Let me give you a proper introduction before I jump into the questions here. Burton Hall is the founder of Burton Hall and Associates, a creative resource that produces editorial, editorial copy, workshops, print, video, and web programming for automotive clients. His client lists include most of the major marks in the world, including Audi, BMW, Jaguar, Maserati, Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Peugeot, and Volvo, just to name a few. He's written for the Washington Post, Auto Week Magazine, Corvette Monthly, Jaguar Magazine, BMW Magazine, Hemmings, Haggerty Magazine, and numerous auto restoration buff books. He's collaborated with legends including Donald Healy, Nuccio Bertone, and Raymond Lowy. There's a name. Burton is a member of the Society of Automotive Historians and the Historical Vehicle Association. Some of his cars include a 61 Corvette he's owned for 53 years and a 53 XK120 MC drop head. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Burton, but first, a word from our valued sponsors that make this show possible. Give them a listen, give them a little love. That's why we're here. Keep your seatbelt on, don't fall out the car, and we'll be right back. Did you know that Covercraft is much more than car covers? They offer protection for the inside of your vehicles as well. No matter what kind of vehicle you drive, Covercraft makes a floor mat, a cargo area protection product just for your vehicle. Their plush custom fit floor mats turn any ride into something special. Their premier Berber custom floor mats, which are a favorite of mine, if you want something very stylish and unique for your favorite ride, they also have weather shield Floor liners that provide ultimate protection for heavy dirt, mud, snow, and slush. Their Carhartt custom cargo liners not only look great, but keep your rear cargo area and seats protected from the kids, the pets, or whatever's going on back there. Do you have a pet? 
that destroys your vehicles? Covercraft has you covered for that too with a wide variety of pet protection options. Is your vehicle getting a little long in tooth? There's no better way to give it a new car look than with a custom fit floor and trunk mat. I replace mine every few years with something a little different just for fun. All your options are easy to clean, they secure to the floor, and they look oh so good. Don't forget your trunk too. Custom fit trunk liners for sedans, coupes, and SUVs are perfect to protect the factory carpet from all those things that can stain, tear, and damage your carpets. Check out Covercraft.com for the huge number of styles, colors, and options that you'll love. And I've got a deal for you here at Cars Yeah. If you use the Yeah120 code at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order on me. Go to Covercraft.com, use the code Y-E-A-H-120 at checkout and get 10% off today. Covercraft, they've got you covered. American Collectors Insurance, that's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. They've been protecting vehicles since 1976. With all the time, effort, and money you've put into your classic vehicles, do you know how much you would receive if yours was stolen, damaged, or totaled in an accident or a fire? Your regular auto insurance carriers won't tell you until after the claim and more than likely you'll be in for a rude awakening. With an agreed value policy from American Collectors Insurance, you'll be paid your vehicle's full agreed value. No surprises. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you'll get with an agreed value policy. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324 and protect the ones you love. Tell them Mark Green at Cars Yeah sent you. That's American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, folks just like you and me. All right, we're back. Uh, Burton's still in the car with me, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, as we continue <laughs> as we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for some kind of a success quote, a mantra, something that's important to you. I say it's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning a little bit here on Cars, yeah. So Burton, grab the wheel. I guess with my business, always hire people smarter than you because I find that to think that you're the smartest person in everything, except if you're Leonardo da Vinci, you're <laughs> probably fooling yourself. And I found that by hiring people, I'm, I have better cameramen than me, better illustrators. My illustrators have my art on their bulletin boards because they're so bad, you know, like little stick figures, but they communicate. <laughs> and I find that if you trust those people and respect them, give them the confidence they deserve, what comes out of that is, okay, here's my idea, make it better. And, you know, at the end of the day, the benefits can be, can be profound. Absolutely. So that has served me well. You know, I've heard this from so many of my successful, inspiring automotive enthusiasts. And from all of it, if I can think back to my college days of art history, even Leonardo hired people to do some of his uh, creations for him that maybe could uh, chip away some plaster or some marble a little bit better than he could do. But uh, it's definitely a smart way to go through business. And you learn so much from having those people around you that are better than you, right? Oh, God, yeah. And basically, I tell anybody who's worked with me is that my job is to make the final decision. Your job is to give me great choices. And when people realize you respect what they do, they are eager to share. And that only benefits me. And maybe it sounds selfish, but I think it benefits everybody. You know, you're absolutely right. Last week, I had a great guest on Carlos Saloom, and he is a gentleman who uh, is writing a wonderful book called The Glass is Full and a Half. And his whole career is about motivating people and finding ways to motivate people. He motivates race car drivers like the Fittipaldis and famous uh, athletes and so forth. And he talks about one of the things that's so important that you touched on here, Burton, and that is bringing people up, offering things to people for them to rise to the top. That's the sign of a great leader. And we've all worked for people that do exactly what you do, that make our jobs feel important to us. They make us feel important. And unfortunately, probably we've worked for people that do quite the opposite and micromanage and never allow us to come to our full 
potential, kind of like what they call those helicopter parents that hover in every time the kid falls down and so forth. So, uh, you know, at least your parents didn't keep driving when you fell out the car and your dad yelled out the window, try to keep up, Burton, try to keep up. Yeah, run, Forrest, run, uh, all of that. So, well, it's a it's a wonderful way to be successful and it is a secret to being successful. All my successful guests do that. I would love for you to talk a little bit more about Burton Hall and Associates. You know, how I found you is through your blog and uh, I thought, I've got to have this guy in the show. I really like what he's doing. He's very creative. I've been around. We both have pretty much the same haircuts, it looks like. Uh, I like the look. We go to the same barber. You've got a better beard than me. Tell us about Burton Hall and Associates and all the great things you've been doing with your career and what gets you excited, even to this day, uh, jumping out of bed and uh, having some fun around cars. I would say you've caught me in a transition. Good. I like it. Involved. I am pursuing Burton 2.0. I love it. And Burton 2.0, I still, I've had the business for 33 years. Wow. I, I still do work. I uh, do work more archival now and writing. I work with the Jaguar Archive, Volvo Archive. But I started Drive-In News. And that has, in a way, I'm working for me. I still have the business. But when COVID came, I had always wanted to take a great course on collectible automobiles, and it was never given. So I decided to create it. So I created a course called Collectible Automobiles as a Passion. And uh, I opened it up. Uh, I went to a very good, you know, adult school. And when I presented the concept, the response was, well, collectibles, you know, you know, beanie babies and, <laughs> you know, pummels. And I was like, no, no, you don't we're get talking it. art, we're talking history. So the second time I pitch it, they're like, OK, you know, give it one try. Well, we were in our uh, 14th semester. Uh, we were the most successful class. Uh, we would always exceed the, the limits of a class. They wanted to put me in an auditorium. I refused because what happens is that you have people, everybody in the class is smarter than me. I brought in friends to team teach with me. One had been the head of marketing for Volvo was the director of Bob Austin, the, uh, the director of the uh, uh, Rolls Royce Club of North America, Fred Hammond, who ran uh, P- PR for Porsche Racing. And we have people in the class who would come in and we figured we'd have a class and then the next semester we'd have a new class. We had people who got left back 12 times. Wow. Who have come every time. We've done class trips to the Sam Mann collection to uh, the uh, um, down in Philadelphia, uh, the Simeon Museum collections around. We've had people who placed in the Simeon. We've had people at Amelia. So it's an extraordinary population. And then COVID came and you could hear the crickets because schools shut down. We weren't allowed to get together. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to create a community online And basically, I created Drive-In News, and there's lots of great blogs and everything around, and it was focused on three things, cars we love and who we are. Everybody goes and goes, oh, that's a great car. Who is the person behind that car? What's their story? Then it was conversations with, with people we value, and last, roads we remember. Wow. And with that, I've started to spread out. It's, you know, it's an organic process, but I've made it to Germany and Australia, you know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But people respond because I can write about whatever it is I believe has value where it might not make it in a magazine. I don't have advertisers. We have um, food pantries around here. And because of COVID, there's a lot of people who need so I create an event called Carnicopia, and it's the Carnicopia Food Drive. Wow. And what we did is I got all the guys together and women, because we have women in our class. We have car guys are, you know, all genders. And I have the pictures. Everybody had masks. The cars were, you know, distanced apart in a big parking lot. So every other thought, everybody made a donation to the food pantry, we gave over a thousand bucks plus lots of food. Wow. And everybody contributed at a time where basically everybody feels powerless. Right. 
and they just look around and go, what can I do? So we try to uh, pull people together, even if all of the forces, like those old pith balls in science class where everything is pushing apart. Right. So that's what I've tried to do with Drive-In News. You know, this is absolutely spectacular, and I love this for a variety of ways. Uh, pivoting, I love your 2.0, reinventing yourself. You know, I, re- I did that uh, when I left my old business I'd been with for 20 plus years and reinvented myself with this podcast and thought I'd try it for a little while. And six years later, I get to talk to uh, inspiring automotive enthusiasts like you. In fact, 1,600 and... Uh, 30 of them now. So uh, yeah, it's an important thing to do in your life, a really important thing to do, because uh, you want to keep trying things and doing things. And what you've learned is what I've learned after talking to so many people is this car hobby, this collector's hobby that we're into is not really about the cars. It's about the people involved around the cars. And I love the way you said it's their stories. And when you think about it, you fell in love with cars when you fell out of a car. (laughs) The fact that we think about these vehicles as moments in time in our life and we go back to them. So I love what you're doing. And of course, you also discovered, Burton, the real secret to life's happiness, and that's giving to others through your carnicopia, which I think is a wonderful idea. I'm sitting here thinking, how could I do that with my community? Because we look, we donate to our local food bank. So many people are, are hurting right now and struggling. So you took the pandemic, you pivoted and, and made something positive of it. So uh, bravo to you. My hat's off to what you've done. This is fantastic. Really, really great job. One other thing with the drive-in news, the love of my life and I, we love driving on blue highways. You know, blue highways are those little roads that go nowhere near an interstate. And you'll drive by and you go, people will go, oh, that's interesting. And keep driving. We now pull over and go, what's your story? Yeah. And one of the things I always pulled over for was, you know, you're driving through Utah. You're driving, and often a field is a car surrounded by, you know, a patch of virgin weeds and then mowed around and it's there. And I'd stop to see the car. But I've recently stopped and tracked down the owners Nice. and go, what's your story? Yeah. And stories are wonderful. Be careful because you could end up like Harold LeMay from the famed LeMay Museum right down the road from me and end up with 4,500 cars uh, (laughs) uh, stopping with all those. How can people learn more about what you just shared with us? Where can they go to find you and and all of that? Drive-in, D-R-I-V-I-N hyphen news n-e-w-s dot com they can reach me at burton at driveinnews dot com or they can reach me at burton at behallassos dot com b-h-a-l-l-a-s-s-o-c dot com there you go well and if you got a story let me know you know email me and i love it i love to hear stuff Absolutely. I'll put links to all of these in case you're driving or walking or riding a bike right now on Burton's show notes page on the Car Show website. Just uh, go to my site, uh, click the search bar, type in Burton Hall. Very easy. I think he's the only Burton that's been on Cars, yeah, so very <laughs> unique there. A lot and, of them. Yeah, and uh, his page will pop right up with all these links. Burton, I'd like to talk about a big challenge we faced in our lives. Now, you talked about your first one, falling out of a car. That certainly <laughs> is a challenge that you survived, but more importantly, I'd love for you to share a story where maybe even you came up against a wall, a big failure. Uh, it isn't so much about the specific thing, although I want you to take a deep dive there, but it's more about... What did you learn from that so you could come out in a very positive way? So take us on a little ride here. Two places. I'm going to do business and I'm going to do personal. Okay, perfect. All right. The business challenge is I was working for a a manufacturer before I went out on my own. And they just eliminated my department, my position. And I said, well, these are all the things I do. And they go, well, not anymore. Wow. We want you to do this thing, which does not appeal to you. I could have been there in my mindset the rest of my life. I loved what I did. All of a sudden, I remember sitting in the office as they were, you know, the VP of here and this and that. Just letting me to go. And I'll be honest, half of me was choking up. And the other half of me was designing my business card. <laughs> Good for you. And I'm like, I know, ne- I don't think I, I was freelancing. I was writing for everybody while I worked for this corporate. It didn't impede what I did, 
I, I just won awards for doing a, a national sales meeting. We had launched the Volvo 780. We had uh, won awards for the films we shot in Europe. But I'm like, I'm going to try this. And it was jumping out of the plane. Yeah. And I said, I'll give it a certain amount of time. And a lot, I, I envy people who go, I'm 11 years old and I'm going to be a sportscaster. <laughs> I yeah. still don't really know. I never had a plan in my life, but I had a process. Mm. And the process would go, okay, I'll put that on the back burner. And when the chili is right, I'll bring it up. I'll try it. I'll start my business. If it goes south, goes sideways, okay, I'll go to plan B. Sure. And that's been the process of my life. And if you look forward, my life makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I got my degree in engineering. I got certified as a teacher. I went back to graduate school for journalism. Makes no sense. Looking back, it's it's like a perfect roadmap. There you go. So so that that was a big challenge for me. Personal challenges. You know, everybody's got stuff. I mean, if you get to your age and my age, life is a river. <laughs> and if you haven't had white water, you really haven't lived. Right. So that, you know, you either can be a rudder or an anchor and get your butt dragged along the bottom. So go for rudder. Rudder is better. What I found, and there are some people who, you know, are controlling people, and I'm probably guilty of that. And therefore, you know, I'll solve everything myself. Well, just sometimes it is worthy of sharing with a friend and just say, hey, Mark, just saying. And there is a sense that, ah, a, a sign of weakness. What that really is, is you're giving your friend permission to share with you the insights they got from getting dragged along the bottom in the white water. Right. And you don't dwell on it, but you end up with insights and probably a better friendship. Oh, absolutely. Uh, giving permission, you use some wonderful words there, giving permission of friends, colleagues, uh, somebody that you trust in your life to open yourself up and say, hey, I'm going through something. I need some help here. And I found you'll you'll discover who your real friends are because the ones that are not will kind of brush you off and won't really give you their time. And then you never hear from them again. They won't even check back in. But you find out who your real friends are. And it's it's like that in any case. I found, especially in this car community, you know, if you have a challenge with a car, you reach out. The car community is very unique, uh, very willing to stop, step. I've had people step out of a meeting and come to the phone and say, what do you need? How can I help you? We're a different kind of breed, I believe. And I've been told that by even people who've been on my show that work in television or another industry, but cars are their passion, that in their industry, people aren't willing to share. They're very guarded about their life and their business, they look at you as maybe a competitor, but not so in the car world. I would agree. And in the class that, that I, I put together, we have people ranging from, you know, the guy in the class with the hat, with the logo of the car that he dreams of having someday. And we have the other, uh, the other end of it with the guy with a 16 car garage. And my favorite is the one guy in the class who rebuilt his house so he could have five working bays in his basement. <laughs> Wow. You know, but the thing is, at the end of the day, the guy with the hat is really smart. Yeah. And the guy, over, you know, with the with the 16 cars going, how have you dealt with that? And it's a wonderful, a wonderful community. And, you know, like the public, the, the pebble in the pond, it ripples out so that now you have friends of members in the class are talking to friends of other members in the class and the ripples go all the way out. So. One thing is I'm thrilled with that community. Absolutely. Wonderful thing you've done. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors here. When we come back, we're going to dive into Burton's personal life around cars. We're going to get past that moment where he flew out the suicide door and find out a little bit more about some of the cool cars and things he's done. So sit tight. Again, keep that seatbelt on so you stay in the car and we'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation to talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians 
and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through automotive-related events, car shows, and drives. Among those nonprofits is RPM Foundation, a terrific organization working to keep our favorite collector cars on the road. RPM was created to ensure that the specialized skills needed to care for classic automobiles, boats, and motorcycles continue to be passed down from generation to generation. They do this by supporting training for young people with a passion for restoration and setting them up with mentors who can share their valuable knowledge. So far, they've awarded more than $3.5 million to restoration education projects across 35 states. Incredible! To learn more about RPM or to donate to their mission, visit www.rpm.foundation. You'll be glad you did. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yow for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. So, what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans? Well, if you're a racer and the Racers Group team owner, Kevin Buckler, you start Adobe Road Winery. It's located in Petaluma, California. And he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series. Four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today, I'm going to talk about Shift. This wine was awarded 93 points by Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. It's balanced and spicy with dark blueberries and a cigar aroma. The unique bottle shape features a vintage-inspired metal gated shift back with carbon fiber, and the cork is topped with a five-speed shift knob. That's right. There's going to be some battles at the dinner table on who gets to keep the cork after this bottle has been enjoyed. The Racing Series is a delicious gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life, and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARS, yeah, all one word in caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the Racing Series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly right at your door. Use the code CARS, yeah, at checkout and get $10 off your purchase from the Racing Series today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the Racing Series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARS, yeah, today. <coughs> Cheers! All right, Burton, we are back. I'd love for you to share a story that instigated that personal passion you have for cars, that pivotal moment in your life when you knew, you know what? I think I'm a car guy. Before I said, I don't have a plan, I have a process. That is how I, and all the things I like to do, travel, photography, friendship, tinkering, writing, I found that the involvement of the automobile made it better. So that as part of that process, it's organic, where it's like, well, you know, I like working on that. Well, I like writing about that. I like photographing that. And that has almost like vines growing up a wall. It just has woven itself into the fabric of my being. And I know you have some pretty cool cars. I mentioned a couple of them in your introduction. What was your first really special car, that car you got that you wanted perhaps for a long time? Uh, And share a memory you have about that vehicle. Well, clearly, the second car I ever got 
I bought in 1967, 1961 Corvette, Honduras Maroon, Ermine White Shell, two fours, four speed, dual point, 411 Posi. I still have it. I've had the car 53 years. Amazing. It is, it's a great driver. If I look at it, it's a vehicle that I've had my whole adult life. So it is a witness to the good, the bad, the indifferent, the mundane. But when people go, oh, you know, cars and, you know, you like driving and you're racing. It has been two examples when you talk about cars being humanity. One was my dad and uh, he's gone 40 years. Mm. And, and sometimes this chokes me up. Yeah. Um, so he was always in great shape, but he smoked his whole life. So in the last six months of his life, he went into serious decline. So he went into the hospital and uh, finally, I just said, you let me know when he can come home. And he was in a floor in the hospital where people don't come home. Mm. So the nurses called me and they said, we've done everything we can do. I said, I'll come get him. So they said, we'll get an ambulance. I said, no, you won't. I put an oxygen tank in the Corvette yeah. and pulled up in front of the hospital. They rolled him out and I rolled him out. Yeah. In that vet. In that vet. Yeah. And that was his, uh, his last ride in the vet, his last ride home. And he was gone in a week. What a ride though. What a memory for you and for him. And now I know why that car will never leave your garage. I'll give you one more. Yeah. My mom, who was, my dad was a technical guy. I mean, I ended up a bridge in my life. I'm an engineer and a writer, okay? My dad, he, he used to put, uh, I saw for Sheeny engines and boats and race them. And, he, you know, he worked for Cadillac and Minerva. My mom was a reader, very literature, you know, make me play Scrabble when I'm six. And she was afflicted in, in her 80s with uh, um, Alzheimer's. Mm. And, uh, and I would watch her deteriorate. So she was in a, a care facility. So I would drive the Corvette over, park it, roll her out in the wheelchair. I'd sit on the sill facing her in the wheelchair. And that car, you'd see like little shooting stars. Memories would come through right. and flash for a second. Wonderful. It's not just carburetors and gears. No, absolutely. It's all about memories. Wow. Thanks for sharing really personal stories there. I want to ask you this. I'm going to get into your mind a little bit here. If you woke up tomorrow, yeah, I've been told that by a few of my guests, uh, but I'll venture, I'll venture there anyway. Burton, if you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself as steel, iron, rubber, gas, oil, what would Burton Hall be and why? As he rubs his forehead. Hmm, that's a sign. All right. I would be carbureted. Okay. Old school. I would be a four speed. Okay. And I'd be a 1968 El Camino. El Camino. 27, 325 horse. Okay. Interesting. And I, because if it's reflecting me as a car, I'd be fun. I'd be capable of doing work. I'd be a bit unusual. And all the while I'd be looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely said. Well, the El Camino is such a, a wonderful piece of history and unique piece of history. And I've always kind of wondered, although even Volkswagen came out with like their version of the El Camino, that BW I, truck, you know, and different people have tried it, but nothing's ever really stuck. Uh, but they certainly are iconic classic cars and they do kind of a lot of different things. So that sounds like you, Burton. Great answer to that story. <laughs> I'm going to enter what I call the last lap, a little bit of a lightning round, ask for some quick okay. uh, quick blips of the throttle answers of that 68 El Camino from you. So here we go. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has helped contribute to your successes in life over these years? Sure. So I write, and part of my job is to walk into an empty room with a client and a concern and walk out of the room with a client and a solution. Uh. And whether it's a story or whether it's an idea, I absolutely sleep on it overnight because you can be drawn in by the familiarity when you're creating something. But when you wake up the next morning, you're viewing it with new eyes. And that has really been a cornerstone. Uh, yeah, I can write something quick if you need it quick. But if I really want to romance something, I absolutely 
have a night's sleep, and then I revisit it. You know, my my wife of 35 years nearly here um, is way smarter than me. Uh, she studied engineering and loves to do math puzzles and reads like crazy. Uh, but she always just told me that when I'm struggling with something. And I worked for 11 years as a creative director in an ad agency. And then the company I was with, Griot's Garage, for 20 plus years. M- one of my many roles there was the creative side, marketing side, merchandising side. And I'd come home trying to struggle with something. And she'd always say, sleep on that. Because your brain is still working on it, whether you know it or not. Uh, it's, it's the same when you take a walk. You know, I try to take a walk every day with my neighbor's dog. And uh, it lets your brain kind of free up and but it's still working in the background. And uh, it's a really good piece of advice. Yeah, give yourself a break and let your brain do the work while you're you're resting. How about if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased? Who would that individual be? I got one for you, but I want to add one an- other answer to that earlier question. Uh huh. And the other thing is keep a pad and a pen by the bed because you'll wake up in the middle of the night and you'll realize the secret to happiness in life. <laughs> and you know, I can't wait to the morning. And, you know, and in the morning, you have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> so I always write stuff down when I think of it. I'll move on. Your question, Miles Collier. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I've had the opportunity. I mean, I had the opportunity to sit down for dinner with uh, um, Nuccio Bertone. And uh, <laughs> And with two of his fellows, uh, John Beppe Panico and Enzo Prero, spoke brilliant English. And just to pepper him with questions like, what was it like in the Depression being a carceria? You know, and it was magic. And there are people who, um, you know, Kettering, who was brilliant. But I think, I think Miles Collier has a perspective, almost as a, a, a historical perspective, that will put pieces together. Mm-hmm. And I think he's a real car guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but but there are car guys, and I think he's a real car guy, even if a car is not special. He'll know why it is special, because sure. of the human side. So I'd enjoy that. Yeah, I would love to have him on the show. He's a very private individual tried to get him on this show I've, I've met him a couple of times and talked with him of course he's very well known for the revs institute meaningful ventures uh the things he and his wife parker are doing uh for the automotive industry and so forth so definitely miles collier would be a wonderful person to sound with and he's got some pretty darn nice cars too <laughs> that's, that's for sure and he's got a county named after him. So his a whole father. county. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Interesting background history of that family, racing and cars and all of that. What's the best automotive advice someone else has ever offered you, Burton? Oh, there's a couple. First, creative. All right. And this was this was great. If you're creating something, if you're writing something, don't tell me what to think. Don't tell them what to think. Show them why to think it. Because you're going to love this car because yada, 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 yada. Whereas if you demonstrate why, then let them realize. Mm-hmm. We're so, so eager to tell somebody what to think or what to do. We no longer show them and allow them the respect to let them figure it out. Nice. That's one. I think... Um, Restoration management, project management, scope creep, know when to say enough. (laughs) Nobody does. And you end up, you know, I I had to make a decision where it was, are you taking the body off the chassis? And I'm like, this is not, this is going to be a driver. Why don't you power wash the chassis? Because all the lines are perfect on this car. You pop that off, save me money. I'm dry, you know, you drive it so that scope creep is just be careful. Absolutely. And lastly, personal, don't buy that Ferrari. <laughs> and I had thought about it at one time, and a fellow of mine is a judge at, you know, at, at, um, at, at Ferrari events and a, and a good friend. And I said, come and take it, look with me. And he just described the red mist. <laughs> and. I am thankful that I didn't buy that one. I don't have any. I may never have any, 
but that was great advice. <laughs> That's funny. How about a resource? Uh, of course, we've talked about you as a great resource or a go-to for people. Uh, is there another one that's a favorite of yours? Yes. Kudos to anybody else who's ever heard of it. I got a copy. It's a magazine called Skinned Knuckles. Okay. It has, to a degree, the look of some guys who are, you know, and I don't mean this uh, demeaning, almost lovingly, you know, in their basement putting this together. I've gotten that magazine for the last 45 years. Wow. And it is on two color on the cover, black and white inside. And if you want really great restoration information, skin knuckles. It's like 26 bucks a year. Okay, right now, the, the three articles, rear end, understanding and maintaining the aft end of a car or truck. I got scammed, admissions of a car collector who got taken by internet scammers, and everything there is to know about lug nuts. <laughs> love. I'm afraid to ask what love nuts are. No, lug nuts. Oh, lug nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, um, let's see. I'm to, knuckles. Yeah. It's, it's for restoration. <laughs> it is absolutely worth a subscription. And that way I know it will continue on. All right. That other magazine's about love nuts. We won't go there. <laughs> how, how about, oh my gosh. I, I'll have to ask my, uh, my good, well, good listener, Chris, if that was okay to leave in. He always catches me <laughs> if we have any uh, off-color stuff here, but I think we're okay. How about a book? Is there a book you'd like to share with us, Burton? Yeah, it's a compilation. And the book is called uh, By Brooks Too Broad for Leaping. And it's by Denise McCluggage. Ah. And it's a compilation of many of her columns. And again, By Brooks Too Broad for Leaping. And I know she has a story in there. Uh, again, you know, a column. But she's driving across Paris or across France to meet somebody. And anybody who has ever driven, I think, I know it's me, she's by herself. She's going through this village. And you know how narrow the streets are and, you know, the little villages. Yeah. And she happens to look up to the second floor window. And there is, she can see like a chandelier and a person and she realized she shared their life for three seconds. Mm, yeah. And I know I feel that way when I'm driving through and you catch a window, you catch a yard, you look through the front, you see somebody. And for those three seconds, you're, you're living their life. And I just thought that was incredibly insightful. And it's filled with wonderful recollections about racing, drive. She's a wonderful writer. A, a, a great driver and uh, um, uh, a fascinating person. So by Brooks, too broad for leaping. Denise McCluggage. Absolutely. And uh, I had Denise as a guest on this show before we lost her years ago. I got to spend uh, about an hour with her at a Pebble Beach concourse sitting next to her as the, the winning cars were rolling over the um, the platform there. Uh, on one side of me was Denise. The other side of me was Sir Jackie Stewart. I had to pinch myself. Oh. For that whole hour, uh, but I got to get their perspectives, and luckily, I got to have Denise on the show very shortly afterwards. She passed. Uh, wonderful woman, she was great. Thanks for mentioning her, and you can find her show listeners on the Carja yeah! website very easily. Before I ask you this checker flag question, I we're talking about books here. One of my longtime sponsors has a cool book here, so that'd be great. I'm going to let you listen to this little ad spot. When we come back. I'm going to ask you. A doozy of a question, so sit tight. Oh, boy. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting, but what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy to read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get 
get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we are back, Burton. And uh, as I said, this last question can be a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you a collector car today. Anything in the world, I'm going to park it in your garage. But as my listeners know, there are a few rules to this game since I'm buying you that car. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. You got to keep it. It's got to tick all the boxes. I want you to drive it. No garage queens here. Here's the hard part, though. You would have to get rid of all your collector cars and only have this one vehicle. So... If you don't want to do that, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do something special for you, Bert, and I don't do this quite often. That Corvette can stay in your garage because I can't make you get rid of that. That makes the answer to this way too easy. So the Corvette stays, but the one other car that's sitting next to that Corvette, Whoa. what's it going to be? <laughs> I threw uh, you a curve, didn't I? Yeah, man, because that Corvette is, if there's one car in the garage, that's it. Of course. Uh, yeah, but now I know the whole story, so I can't make you get rid of that. That's impossible. One car. One car. <laughs> I think I've stumped him. He's got his hand on his head. They say whenever somebody puts their hand the higher on the head, the harder the answer to the question. He's trying oh. to pick himself up from the top of his skull right now because we're on <laughs> Skype. Okay. Okay. Money is no matter. A couple of things here. There are cars that are wonderful and they're expensive and I'd never have the money to be able to restore them. Uh, you know, I'd never, you know, sure, I'd love a Ferrari 250 GTO. <laughs> I love a Bugatti Royale, uh, but I couldn't do them justice. Okay. So I'd have to get something that I could actually, wow, take care of. And let's say, give me, give me two seconds. I'm screwing <laughs> up the time. I know. Da, 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 da. I would just for the hell of it. Yeah. Uh, just for I, the day. For the day. It's going to be a Duesenberg. I don't care about the money you spent it. Yeah. And it would be a, a, a Duesenberg boat tail roadster. Okay. That's nice. I like that. I think we could do that. I actually, I'll make this quick. Back in the early 80s, I had reason to find a gentleman whose name was Doc Schweiger, who owned 300 cars. Uh, and, and he was outside of Hollywood and he never spoke to a writer. And I knew a contact and I went. And uh, I met Doc Schweiger. He was 92 years old. Uh, his son had passed away. So he was running the, the business again. I think it was called Pacific Car Rentals. And you walk in there, three airplane hangars. And on one wall, there was a, a dozen Rolls Royce Sedanka DeVilles in the middle with the Duesenbergs. And he had uh, a boat tail that had been Gary Cooper's. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I do remember that car. And it was. It was magnificent. So I rambled. I apologize, but that's what popped into my mind, and it's your money. So, yeah, my money. Well, yeah, thanks for spending my money so wisely. <laughs> yeah. So are we talking like, you know, the, the famed uh, 33 to the SJ or the Model J, the 34? Uh, the great thing about that 33, as I recall, had those giant pipes coming out of the side, you know, that looked so cool. Is that the one? I just want yeah. to make sure I get this right. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very nice. <laughs> I, I still have a picture of it. And it was for sale in 2015. I remember seeing that. I knew the car. And I actually have pictures of it from 1981. Wow. It was a little cheaper back then, I would suspect. Just tweaked it. A little bit. Burton, you've taken me on an awesome ride. I knew this would be fun. I want to thank you for sharing your life and your stories. Before I let you go, though, before you drive off into the sunset in that uh, Duesenberg Motel Speedster, <laughs> could you offer our listeners maybe one little bit of wisdom and advice? Yeah. Live below your means. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very wise. You'll be a lot happier. That's for sure. How can people, again, follow along with you and learn more about what you're doing? Certainly. They can go to drivein, D-R-I-V-I-N dash news, N-E-W-S dot com. They can contact me at Burton at drivein dash news dot com. Or they can reach me at Burton at B-Hall Asos dot com. So if you got a great story, you know, send it out to Burton at drivein news and uh, we'll see what we can do. 
Absolutely. I'll make sure I put all those links on Burton's show notes page. Definitely check him out. Uh, subscribe, follow him. You're going to be happy you do. Burton, thanks for being so generous today with your time, with your expertise, and with your experiences. This has been a delight. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah. Yeah.